Bring in our first guest of the morning, Brett Ciancia, owner of Pick 6 Previews, joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. So do we understand that you are actually conducting this interview at the Jersey Shore right now? Yes, that's, uh, that's exactly right. I'm looking at the ocean right now. Uh, so we're really going national here, coast to coast. Um, but uh, appreciate you guys having me on and ready to talk some BYU. All right. So now, before we get to that, though, this brings now you're obviously there now. Blaine is is from the East Coast, so he's been to the Jersey Shore. I've never been there. How accurate is MTV's Jersey no, Shore from no. what you actually see at the Jersey Shore? Yeah, not quite. I, maybe up where Blaine was going. Uh, no, <laughs> Brad, I was down with you. You're down. You're down okay, south yeah. by Wildwood. Like, no, that nonsense. Yeah. That, that's not real. I, Come on. No, I'd say throw out that character of the Jersey Shore. It's a lot of uh, you know cover bands, a lot of Bruce Springsteen music. Uh, you know, family atmosphere. Good, good bar scene. Good restaurants. A lot of Italian food. So. Um, yeah, not not like the TV show. Very very nice. Well, we'll we'll get through the interview and then let you get back to your uh, to your vacation at the Jersey Shore. Yeah. You know, Brett, the, the good thing is that for you, regardless of how the season plays out, or even if the season is played, doesn't change your ability to preview these teams now. Before we get into the specifics of BYU, you had the Cougars as part of your P five preview. Now, personally, I love that that they're included with the P fives. But why did you decide to have BYU's preview as part of the P five schools? Yeah, so quick background. I launched Pick 6 Previews in 2012. Over those first seven seasons, I was graded the most accurate BCS Power 5 predictions in the country. Uh, that's compared to the ones on newsstands and online. Uh, in 19, I put out a, a comprehensive book, a preseason preview book of the 65 Power 5 teams, and that included Utah. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a ton of BYU fans, as you guys know, a passionate fan base on Twitter. I, I got a lot of feedback, you know, telling me I should include BYU, and you guys certainly deserve a spot. So here in 2020, I added BYU. It was exciting taking a deep dive into the analytics, the history, the coaching schemes, uh, the 2020 personnel. But certainly they deserve P5 credit because, hey, you guys have a national title. Uh, it, it, you guys, BYU's at, at the top of all the win, you know, most win interval lists when you go back 10, 20, 40 years. Um, and there's a national fan base. It's a passionate fan base. So uh, I'm glad I included, it, included BYU. It was a no-brainer looking back. Well, we love that. I agree with you 100% on that. Bless you, Brett. Yes, we love Brett. It. So uh, as a member of that national championship team, I appreciate you referencing that. That's awesome. Um, hey, hey, BYU this year, Kalani has a lot of returning players and maybe the most talent he's had since he's been the head coach, at least in terms of depth. What did you see when you looked at the Cougars in terms of strengths, weaknesses heading into this season? Yeah, I think that uh, it starts on offense. I think we're ready to see a, a pretty major step forward here in 2020. Uh, I thought it might have come in 2019, given all the returning production, but uh, there were some injuries to deal with at quarterback, and then the offensive line was banged up. I think it was 16 different line combos were used. Now, that said, it was still a pretty strong unit up front. Um, I think that turns into uh, an even bigger strength this year. Brady Christensen's a star at left tackle. Um, you know, the unit's back and healthy. Overall, as an offense, it's top 25 in returning production numbers, like returning starters and, and yardage. Um, you know, a, a lot of – so some prog most programs have two or three receivers that get the lion's share of the receptions or one feature back. At BYU, they spread the ball around to 10, 11 receivers, um, which is a good thing. You have fresh legs and a deep core there. Uh, three guys in the backfield are impressive. And then Matt Bushman, uh, you know, it's rare for a tight end to lead the team in receiving yards, except for maybe at Iowa. But for a guy to do it three straight years, entering his fourth, uh, very impressive. So I think the offense takes a step forward big time here. Well, let's stay with the offense. And you referenced this a second ago. Because of injury, BYU used and honestly had success with all three quarterbacks that played last season. Now, the QB spot would seem to be Zach Wilson's to lose. How do you see that position shaking out? Yeah, so if you flash back to 2018, uh, you know, Zach Wilson, he was perfect in that bowl game going 18 for 18. Uh, even that season against uh, Utah, he built up a nice 27-7 to lead there late. Um, you know, they couldn't finish it, but, you know, you saw the upside. You see flashes of upside there. Um, you know, 2019, you mentioned all three guys that experienced and, and flashed at times. I still think Zach Wilson is the lead. Um, you know, he's, he's elusive in the pocket. He's creative. Um, you know, he's able to extend plays with his legs. Um, yeah, so I, I, I like Wilson to start, but it's got to be a good position as a BYU uh, fan or part of the program that you now have quarterback depth. And even if one guy has a cold hand, you have three guys with, ex with starting experience there. So, um, yeah, I like Wilson to start, but uh, it's, it's encouraging seeing the depth there. 
What about on the defensive side of the ball? We hear rumblings that that uh, this defensive staff feels so much more confident in the depth there, especially in the secondary, that BYU may play a lot more man-to-man -man defense this season. What's your thought on the defensive side of the ball for BYU? Yeah, it's interesting defensively because, um, you know, I hadn't formerly covered BYU until this year, but, you know, I've watched a ton of their games. And over the whole Mendenhall era, I mean, this was a program defined by defense. Uh, you know, it was aggressive defense. They were hard-hitting, physical uh, they didn't miss tackles. Um, so that was that was kind of the program DNA. Now, uh, it was attacking. It was a lot of plays in the backfield, negative plays, as I call them. But that that scheme kind of shifted uh, going from Mendenhall to Sataki, where instead of an attacking, you know, high tackles for loss, high sacks team, it was more uh, bend, don't break, a safe base scheme. Uh, not that that's totally bad. It's just a different style. Um, you saw it work at times, too. I mean, against USC, BYU, only bringing three guys in the rush dropping eight into coverage, really forced the young uh, Keaton Slovis into a ton of turnovers. I think five picks uh, confused him. So there's some pros and cons to it. It's different stylistically. Um, but, yeah, I think that this year, uh, to get back to 2020, um, you know, going with that 4-2-5 base scheme, plays to the strengths, like you mentioned, in the secondary, a lot of depth there, moving linebackers around down to the, the DN spot or back into the nickel. So a lot of parts to play with, and I think the defense takes a step forward as well. Talking with Brett Cianci, owner of Pick 6 Previews, and obviously with some of these P5 conferences deciding to go conference only, still waiting to find out if others will follow suit, you know, the topic of scheduling for BYU this year has been a topic of discussion over the last couple of weeks pretty intently, and BYU lost P5, P5 teams from this year's schedule, which looking at the schedule, was one of the best BYU has ever had. How difficult do you expect scheduling to be for a team like BYU, especially if the G5 teams follow suit and maybe BYU loses even more if they go conference only? How difficult do you think it will be for a team like BYU to put together a schedule for this year? Yeah, it's, it's definitely difficult. We've never seen anything like this. Um, of course, on most of the radio and talk shows I'm on, it's, it's one of those Power 5 teams where the conference just cut out non-conference. Um, but you're, you're still able to talk about you know, eight or nine games that are already locked in, maybe a 10th or 11th even that are locked in. So BYU out on their own independent. Um, yeah, I mean, that whole September slate is wiped away uh, automatically. And then we'll see what these other leagues do. It's a shame. I mean, we were talking, like we said, this is one of the toughest schedules that BYU's had. Um, I run my game grader formula. It's, it's you know, scoring differential, yardage, uh, the whole bit, and I adjust it to opponent strength. And how BYU rated out amongst the Power Five, they would have been 39th last year out of 66, so about middle of the pack. That's good for sixth in the Pac-12 had you, you know, related the numbers. So this is a, a pretty solid Power Five team. I would have liked to see them with these challenges, um, you know, getting Michigan State in a coaching change year. Uh, Stanford's a little bit down these days, you know, and then some challenges against Utah and Arizona State in the Pac-12. So it's really a shame for the, for the team. I know they've been preparing for this. Um, this is why you go to a place like BYU for some cool national challenges like that. So that's tough. Now, for BYU to, to fill out this schedule, hopefully the non aqs at least lock in. If not that, then you got to pick up the independent teams, you know, the New Mexico States of the world, um, you know, Army, Notre Dame, hopefully will have some openings. But if not, I don't know what you do. Do you go FCS? Maybe just load up on some FCS teams and at least – have some games. It might not get you bowl eligibility for whatever rules they have there. I mean, hopefully the NCAA grants some kind of some kind of waiver because BYU certainly would deserve a bowl. I don't know. I don't really have an answer for you, but it's going to be interesting to see it unfold. Hopefully they get something together. Well, they, they contractually have an agreement with Notre Dame where Notre Dame owns them one more game. And I, and I just think that Notre Dame and BYU ought to play each other every week, just alternating home and home <laughs> all season if they have to, right? But so, so as of right now, What's your gut feel on the college football season overall that's coming? Is it going to start on time? Is it going to be delayed but played? Or is this thing going to get canceled and played in the spring or canceled altogether? What's your thought? Well, yeah, there's so many factors at play. I mean, first and foremost, I want the, the health and safety of the student athletes, the coaches, the staff, the admin, everybody. That's most important. With that said, if there is a feasible way to get it done, I say do everything we can in our power to get it done. I mean, not just the – uh, not just the financial burden. I mean, this is a huge financial piece to these colleges and, and athletic programs across the country, but more so for the, the student athletes. I mean, the, the insane amount of hours and prep that are put into this thing, uh, I'd feel sick if they just have, you know, one fourth of their college experience just washed away. So get these guys a chance to play if feasible. 
Um, now, I don't have a definitive answer. I kind of shy away from that. I see a lot of these uh, national media coming out with these, uh, you know, grand statements that they know more about pandemics than everyone else. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I could talk a 4-2-5 defense scheme. I don't know how this, how this virus is going to unfold. So uh, I remain optimistic. I, you know, I believe in the American resiliency. We'll find a way. College football is, is so important to this country. I think we need it, um, again, if feasible and if safe. But um, I think we got some kind of semblance of a season this, this fall, and that's totally just a gut, no inside information. So we'll see. Yeah, well, and everything changes. You know, it, it changes by yeah. the day, changes by the hour. You know, you, you just kind of have to go with the flow, and certainly that's, uh, that's what sports is really dealing with right now. Brett, great stuff. Uh, we appreciate you taking a few minutes. We'll let you get back to your vacation at the Jersey Shore. We're jealous Shore. that you're on yes. the Jersey Shore. We wish we were there with you. We hope you have a great, great vacation, Brett. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Anytime. There we go. That's Brett Ciencia, owner of Pick 6 Previews on the Deseret First Credit Union. Hotline Deseret First. You know why we show how.